Hey. hey, mate. All right. How's it going? Very good. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Good, good, good. So um, just kicking it straight off, just explain to people who you are and what you do, and then we'll just crack straight into it. Okay, so my name's Harry. I'm an international photographer and filmmaker. I love traveling around the world, love making videos, taking photos. It's a bit, a bit about it. I've seen quite a few of you travel stuff. Like, it's awesome. Is that kind of what you want to do? Is that just like pure passion? Um, it's a mixture of passion and what I do for work. So right. since I was a little kid, I've always loved traveling around the world, exploring yeah. new places, and then I've sort of merged it into my work. So nice. it's like a bit of a hobby at the same time, my yeah. career. So how do you manage to do that? Do you just like message companies that the places that you're visiting or do you kind of already have a job and then you fly out? Like, how does that work? Um, it's a mixture. So for six months of the year, I live in Ibiza. So yeah. half the year, I've already sort of living in a, like a nice destination. Yeah. Um, in the winter time, I like to go on holidays, take some time off in the winter. So sometimes it's for work, um, pleasure. And if I'm going on for a holiday, like a month holiday somewhere, I do contact brands and do some one-off jobs you know, yeah. to keep me afloat at the same time. That's awesome, mate. How did the IB for thing come about? You've been going there for quite a while now, haven't you, for a few years, and I've seen yeah. you work from that. So, yeah, explain kind of what was the drive to go to IB for, or did you actually go over there for a job and then you just fell in love with it? Like, what was the story? Okay, so I've been going to IB for now for, I think, about 11 years. <laughs> 11 years? <laughs> Yeah, so start yeah. off as a week holiday. Um, went with my cousin. He showed me around. Mm. Instantly fell in love with the island. This is before I was doing like photography and uh, videography as like a you know full time job mm -hmm. and um, a passion. So obviously went there for like a party holiday slash like checking out the scenery and stuff. Fell in love with it. And every year I've kept on going for a holiday like weekly, once a week. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it was amazing. And then I always said, you know, I'd love to live there and work. You know, I don't want to do like a normal job. And most of the jobs, you know, tend to be like bar work, you know, yeah. waiter, selling tickets, PR. And I didn't really want to be doing that sort of stuff. So yeah, um, I think it was in 2014, I had um, an opportunity to go and work there once a week for a, a clubbing brand, doing okay. a video. The amount of money that I was getting for that enabled me to sort of take a risk and make the jump. And, you know, I've been going back yeah. you know, every summer since. That's awesome, mate. That's really cool. So who do you work with? Do you work with like Ocean Beach and all the big places? Um, all like how did it all form and start? Who was the company that you ended up working with? Um, the first company was called Magna Carta. So it was, um, do you know Magna Carta in mm -hmm. the clubbing world? Okay, so Magna Carta is a, it's like an old London, um, how do I explain it? Promotion that does house and techno music. I don't think they're doing anything at the moment, but they're, they're kind of really big. They were like the sort of, Back then, in 2014 era, they were like, who Abode is now. Yeah. So they took me on. I used to work for them in London, shooting their um, shooting their techno raves. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up doing the same thing in Ibiza once a week. That's awesome, mate. Yeah. That's wicked. Um, so kind of like, explain them from there, what kind of happened? Because obviously you've been there for 11 years, which is long. And you stayed there for six months. So did it just expand from there? Did you just get lots of people contacting you? Like how yeah, it's like it's like anything. When you, when you're doing something, you end up um, networking and meeting people, like-minded people. So I ended up meeting loads of promoters, DJs, you know, just everyone in the industry. Um, also being heavily on Facebook um, yeah. in the IB for community groups, you know, I sort of got my name around on the island. So people mm -hmm. was booking me for like weddings, photo shoots, um, you know, business videos, club and events, you know, yeah. everything really. So it sort kind of just expanded from there. Yeah, perfect time. 2014 was like, obviously a lot of people knew about IB and whatnot, but to the scale it is now, you obviously see a lot of people, myself trying to contact a lot of clubs, like, oh, yo, can I come out and have a film and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so it's kind of a good time that you got in that early. Um, but yeah, credit to yourself, man. That's that's really, really good. Um, also, I want to talk about the Leon. Is it Leon? Yeah, Leon Scott. Leon Scott. And uh, how do you pronounce his name? Is it Joss? Joss? Uh, Joss, Joss Mooney. Yeah, I love that video. Like, how just can could you break down kind of the reason of why you did it and how you did it? Because did you use lights or anything, or was it all just pure for like no? The, all, the, the whole idea is um, of all the fitness um, influencers that I shoot, mm -hmm. those two are my favorite to work with. So, I always had an idea of shooting both of them in one video. 
yeah and coming up with an idea so it was it was a full like collaboration so there was no money involved it was like pure passion work um, yeah. um when i was younger i used to do parkour and free running okay so yeah. I used to like explore rooftops do a lot of like rooftop jumping and stuff like that and i wanted to incorporate this sort of gritty london style vibe with um fitness video um a lot of gym videos you've seen it's just like a really glossy clean gym video of someone working out you know like ripped abs perfect lighting and everything it's too clean i want to sound like really gritty underground dirty you know sort of vibe and so i brought my parkour element with um you know the streets of london with mm -hmm. the sort of fitness image hence why they're wearing the hoodies most of the time and yeah, yeah. it's really cool mate it worked out perfectly it was sick mm. i think that's the kind of like the first video i kind of really started following you like because I've seen you work before that, but then I saw that and I was like, I think I even commented it. I was like, holy shit, like, this is sick. Um, and then I've been following you since. So I know you've also gone to Iceland to do a music video. Oh, yeah, so that's going to get released soon. Yeah, I'm excited to see that. I saw some yeah. stills and it looks sick. Um, yeah, we, I, had, I had the news yesterday. So that, I think that's going to be released at the end of, um, end of this month um, or beginning of June. So I'm really excited because I didn't think that was going to get released till like end of the year. And he's yeah. saying, no, there's no point of, you know, sitting on the video. So, yeah, it's going to come out soon. I'm excited to see that. So how did that all come about? Did you have a crew? Was it just you? Like, um, Again, it was in the same way. Really, it, was, it was for a really good friend of mine. So yeah. um, I want to help push his music. So I said, Let's, let, me, let, let me shoot some music videos for you, like help you out yeah. a bit. And um, he came up with the idea of the one in Iceland. So uh, we all flew over. Because the budget was small, it was literally just me and a camera and using the yeah. lights available. So... Again, it was running gun style the same way I shot the, the Josh project. Iceland's quite hard to make it look bad though. Like everywhere in Iceland just looks sick. Yeah. So what was the yeah, concept absolutely. behind the video? Obviously I don't say too much because obviously I want people to watch the actual video when it comes out, but was is there a concept behind it? Yeah, it's like oh, it's hard to remember. The sort of there was a dynamic with a couple that sort of had a breakup things are not going too well and the main focus is on the singer sort of in an isolated area so we chose iceland and a like mm -hmm. a really nice cabin in the middle of nowhere yeah we were really isolated i think we were like an hour away from the next town wow. middle of nowhere so we shot it all like all in like the nature and that was really cool that's i don't want to give too much away but yeah of course, of course. so what's um what's your inspirations with music videos because i've seen that you only really do limited music videos i might be wrong but just from what i've seen online um, so what is it that you tend to look for when you do music videos within an eye um, and obviously visually as well? I haven't really thought about that. I don't, I don't, I like things that look real. I don't like, um, I wouldn't want to shoot a music video where it's just like, oh, how do I explain that? I don't like, um, I wouldn't want to shoot a music video that's like really materialistic, like crazy cars, dancing yeah. girls, throwing money over the place, you know, crazy like location setups. I like shooting things like in nature and um, on sets so it looks real, like a real vibe. Yeah. With, I, I like it also to have like a story narrative look and feel to it. Yeah. So it looks like a short film. I feel like rather than just being like a glossy hip hop video. Yeah. Those videos don't really connect with anyone. I feel mm -hmm. like the best music videos are the ones that tell a story. And not even just with the artists as well, it's, it's us as directors, like it gets us more out there if we can show people like, look, we can actually tell a story, we can do this. Um, so yeah, I, lo I love that because not many people have that to be fair. A lot of people just want to do the hip hop technical, like let's from music, uh, money in the air and have Lambos in the shot and all that sort of stuff. So it's nice. I find it, bo I find it bores me. Like. I really like um, playing with emotion. I like a lot of slow motion as well. Yeah. So if I if I can incorporate slow motion to my videos, what what can sort of touch people's emotions, um, people on the set and also the viewers at home. That's that's what I try and convey with all my videos. Even my travel videos, I try and try and get. I, I want to trigger people's emotions. So with my travel yeah. videos, I want people to feel like ah, oh, I want to go out. I feel it's making me feel happy and excited and like. One hundred percent. You need to use media to its advantages, and that's what it's there for to connect with people. I believe. So you're doing mm -hmm. the right thing. Also, I'm assuming that's obviously comes speaking about the Iceland video. So that comes in hand in hand because you said you wanted to it to be like full of nature. So I'm assuming you got that inspiration from traveling as well. Mm -hmm. Massively. Um. So what's what's your kind of? I know it's quite hard at moments. We're all in quarantine. And it's a bit tough, but. Yeah. What's your goals in the next few years? Because I know you're doing a lot of different things. Are you planning on going back to Ibiza or you kind of want to step away from that? And 
I might step away from it this year because how things are looking, I yeah. feel like it could be a bit of a risk. Like rent's expensive over there. So I feel like um, a lot of businesses are closed at the moment in Ibiza. So I think it might be a bit of a risk, me coming out there. A lot of people not, might not be working or established. Mm-hmm. So I might skip it this year. I'm not sure yet. We'll see what happens. I might go back to Asia. Yeah, Asia's so sick, might, isn't it? Yeah, I like it there. So I, I went to Southeast Asia in February time for like a month amazing like captured so many like six shit so i'd like to do that again yeah um so yeah i'd be first up in the air at the moment so i'm not sure whereabouts did you go southeast asia because i would literally start traveling the world from january and then it got cut short to uh 22nd of march but i was meant to be continue traveling until june yeah so i did thailand vietnam and bali bali in <sighs> indonesia so it's so cool I'm jealous we didn't even get to get to Bali. I didn't even want to. Bali is my dream place, and I didn't even get there. I'm, sh- I'm so yeah. weird. Um, so, so kind of like wrapping it up a little bit. Like I don't want to spend too much time of your time. Um, have you got any advice for anyone kind of coming up, like new in the scene or wanting to be a filmmaker? Because I feel like right now it's a tough time, especially a lot of videographers and filmmakers that are coming onto the scene. Because I feel like no one has originality anymore like everyone's just kind of copying people and that's why i'm trying to get people like you and a lot of different other creatives that i find that are different onto the podcast and then i can give advice or they can give advice to other creatives to kind of stand out and give them like a little kick up the ass a little bit basically because i, I i've tended to do it for the past two years or so i've just kind of like looked at other people's work and not copied but done similar things and now i'm really starting to try stand out and do things differently uh so have you got any advice for anyone um i think just go out every day or at home just do what you want i don't follow trends Mm -hmm. i don't follow hypes or anything like that but i don't watch tv don't listen to the radio nothing i just sort of do my own thing um so i'm not the sort of person that will be like oh there's a new hype i have to copy this because it's the style that you need to do i just do what i feel um I don't even plan things long term. Don't really storyboard anything. I just go with the moment and go with how I feel. So all the like all these music videos I shoot, I don't really plan them. Yeah. I just sort of pick. This is the location we're going to shoot. Um, let's just go. Here's the rough concept. So there's a dynamic, and let's just work around it. And I like improvising and going with the flow. It just sort of works with my personality. So um, that might not work for everyone because some people need to plan and they need to. Yeah. They need like an idea, but it works for me. To, and that's what keeps it fresh because I'm not I'm not copying something. I'm not. There's no plan. I'm just going with how I feel within that moment. So, a lot of my work's based on how I'm feeling at the moment and um, how I sort of see my surroundings. And let's just put it all in and just create something. So, if yeah. you're new, I feel like just get a camera, even if it's an iPhone, and get a camera. Just shoot anything: photos, video. Just shoot whatever that you love whatever interests you um watch youtube videos there's so many tutorials for free like you don't need to go to college like yeah. i failed college um i had to repeat a year i got a U grade and you know i've succeeded and i've done really well with my career so it shows you don't need grades you don't need to go into any sort of education system you just keep practicing keep going and you don't you know you will amount to something with it yeah it goes on in and like you said the more you shoot the more of a niche you're going to find yourself anyway because the more you shoot you kind of find what it is that you really enjoy doing and then you put your own twist to it and then that kind of makes you stand out from the rest i guess unless you have no creativity at all which is really rare in this industry because everyone that does start out ends up doing their own thing and having their own originality so that's great advice mate thank you so much another, for joining as well Go i was gonna on. say another good thing to do is um going on platforms like vimeo and finding yeah. other like videographers that you like and seeing their styles and learning more about cinematography and you know, there's yeah. so many, there's so much like shit that you can learn and be influenced by without having to actually be a carbon copy. You can take influences from everywhere and create your own sort of identity at the end of the day. hundred percent. And I've recently just started like watching YouTube videos, you know, like with like big music video directors and film directors and stuff and just writing notes down that the, you know, key information. Mm-hmm. That's what I've, I've only started doing it last week, but it's really helping me in terms of me implementing it into my work for the future and even now like i'm just in my bedroom doing loads of different creative things and i'm still implementing what they're saying into these home projects uh, so i think i'd probably say that to people as well like 
do what you said, go on Vimeo. I don't even got a bit like an informational speaking video. Just look at people's work. So I really like that. Write it down and then kind of go back to the book later on and think about how you could change that shot or how you could, you know what I mean? Like just write things down and then obviously you can look back on it and then adapt it. Or I think it's just good to have notes there to then. I, I, feel, I feel like I made a good, I think I had about 400 Vimeo videos before that I've created myself before I started getting my sort of identity of yeah. my style. Mm. You know, it's repetition. You just got to keep going, keep going. Anything you do, you know, you keep repeating, repeating the process and then you'll sort of like learn the skills you need to and then you'll start creating your sort of style, I guess. 100%. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it a lot. No, thanks for having me on. It's been great to talk to you, man. Been excited. And so appreciate it a lot. Okay, mate. Thanks, Take mate. See you later. See you, mate. Bye.